A very good afternoon to everyone, and thank you very much for coming again to our global entrepreneurship class. Uh, with us today is a special speaker. Uh, his name is Jack Sim. He's the founder of the World Toilet Organization. Jack is one of the most engaging speak speakers that I have ever met in my life. And he is here, he agreed to speak to us to share his journey through failure and success and how he brought attention to one of the causes that everyone else had been trying to avoid. So without further ado, I'd like you to give him a, a big hand and welcome him to our course today. Thank you. So uh, today I'm, I told it like that, what I learned on the way to the toilet. So maybe to put you into the mood. And uh, is there a clicker here? No. Yes. So what I want to tell you today is basically um, going to be very useful for you any time in your life. So it's not, it's not really to pass your examination because I, I fail in most of my examination in school. So, uh, <laughs> so I started the, I want, I want to tell you that the world is beautiful because bad things can be good things and good things are already good things. So there's mostly good things and uh, you can convert whatever you think is bad things into good things. So um, in one lifetime, what you have in a lifetime is 80 years for men and for women, 84. So if you check the national statistic, that is the average life of a person. Some people live a little bit longer some people die of some short life disease or get killed by car accidents and uh, die earlier. But that's the average. So if you have 80 years, then you have 29,200 days. So what is your age right now? What's the age? 23 and uh, you? 22. So roughly around this age group. So you have to take away what you have already spent. So you don't have 29,200 days. You maybe have uh, 22,000 days. Now he's calculating, he's very, very, very fast. Right? So he's now checking how many days left and he's adjusting to his birthday. And then he realized that, my goodness, I'm gonna die, right? And uh, one thing that I can promise all of you here today is that you're all going to die, yeah? for sure, right? So far, have you, ever, um, have you ever seen somebody who survived life before? Nobody. Okay. Nobody have ever survived life because life is a terminal disease. So you cannot save time. You have to spend time. If you don't use the time, time is gone. If you use the time, time is used. So you have to choose what do you want to do to live a meaningful life. Every day is one day less. Right? But what kind of life do we live in? We live in a rat race where we buy the things we don't need with the money we don't have to impress the people we don't like. So it's a very stupid way of living your life. So why are we living our life like that? Because the shops wants your money and the government wants your GST, right? <laughs> so if they ask you to consume, then they call it economic growth. And if you make more money, uh, you get higher salary, they tax you more. So the whole idea is that they are driving you into a very, very selfish lifestyle. And if you like, made somebody jealous of you, you felt that you have scored something, you have won. I think this is not a good way of measuring success. If you have a bigger car, or a more beautiful wife, or a bigger house, you win. If the other guy's wife is a little bit fat, he lost. Is this the way you are going to measure your life? 
just give yourself some thought. Maybe you don't want this kind of rules. Maybe you want to set new rules that are more interesting and more meaningful. Personally, I have no degree until last year. So I'm 57 now, so at 56, I got my first degree, which is a Master in Public Administration. So I have been failing academically all the, all the time. So why did I fail in school? It's very simple, because I have this bad habit of talking in class. So when people talk in my class, I forgive them because I talk too much in class. And when I'm talking in class, the teacher gets really upset. And in primary school onwards, the teacher keeps sending me to stand outside the class so that I don't disturb the class so that she can teach. And when I come back to the class, I talk again. And so every month, they send me to public caning on stage. So at 10 years old, I'm always on stage, caned by the principal. But that's a bad thing, right? But it actually turned out to be a good thing because I don't have stage fright. <laughs> so in future life, I'm actually very comfortable talking to a group of people or an individual, and I became a very, very good salesman. So thanks to my teacher and my principal, uh, I actually have developed new skill. So this is an example of what would be called a, a anti-fragile system. Uh, where anything good or bad happen to you, it becomes good in the end. Yeah? If you try to design your life this way, no matter whether good things happen or bad things happen, it ends up good, then you look at the good part and you don't bother about the bad part. Right? If, people are, uh, if, your, if your classmates are trying to ask you not to study because she doesn't want you to have better marks than her, then uh, you just ignore that and then you can be deciding on your own. Right? Most of the time you, you get into a trap where a lot of people want you to play because they want to make you feel that everybody is playing. Right? So if you try to see how to convert a bad thing to a good thing, uh, you can see a lot of opportunity. Later on in life, um, I, I work as a salesman, so because of the no stage fright, I was selling very well, I earned a lot of commission, but then my boss changed, my good boss left, and then a very nasty boss took over. So a nasty boss is a bad thing, right? But it turns out to be a good thing because I don't like him, and I resign. And because I resign with no degree, I have no other place to go except to start business. So because of a bad boss, I start business, and then I realized that business is quite easy to make money, and so I started one business every year until when I was 40, I have 16 businesses. Thanks to my bad boss, I became quite a rich man. So bad things can be good if you make use of it. Earlier part in my life, how do I know how to do business? I didn't know I, I was learning business all my life. We were born in a very poor family. My father earned $90 a month delivering grocery from a provision shop uh, on a tricycle and he has to carry glass bottles and climb 10 story to the flats because the lift always don't work. Yeah? And so they don't have enough money to feed the whole family. And so my mother started to become entrepreneurial. She goes to learn sewing in the community center for one dollar, come home to teach six students in the village. The same thing she learned last night, also for one dollar, but in this case her income is six dollars. So she earned a net five dollars by repeating what she learned one night before. So this is, shows me that business is actually very easy to do. Right? If you want to earn money, just repeat what other people tell you and then find an audience. So important thing, when I was five years old, I was already in uh, business school. And so by the time I grew up, I was able to do business quite naturally, even though I don't understand how to read accounts and how to write business plan. 
but that was unnecessary because business is all about common sense and adaptability and if you want to write a business plan it's because you want an investor or you want to impress the bank but if you are an entrepreneur you can always employ somebody who can write a business plan for you so it's not a problem so the bad thing is my father earned 90 dollars and the good thing is because he earned 90 dollars my mother become entrepreneurial and i go to business school at five years old so you try to look inside your life inside your family inside whatever is in your circle what has happened to you until now and maybe you can find a lot of bad things which are actually good things and make use of it so when i was 40 i have 16 businesses and then a recession came that wiped out half of all the wealth that i have and that was a bad thing and at 40 i start to think do i really need more money because i have less money i start to think differently do i need to have more money and i thought the even at half the money i should be able to retire if i live eating at hawker center and I already paid for my house so why don't i just do social work instead because i start to search for meaning of life and that bad thing a recession became a good thing because i was able to get out of the rat race by a conscious decision to make my life more meaningful and more useful rather than just continue to make money and then what do i want to say to myself on the last day of my life what do you want to say to yourself on the last day of your life just imagine now you are 80 years old and the girl you are 84 and you're all lying on your deathbed your family is around you hopefully and what do you want to say to yourself do you want to ask them to fetch your bank account book to take one last look how much money you have how many think that will be the thing that you want to do put up your hand no right so do you want to for the girls do you want to ask them to bring all your prada and louis vuitton handbag and all your shoes and place in front of you before you close your eyes and die is that what you want not really right so what would it be that you would be thinking of at the last moment of your life what do you think i don't know, <laughs> don't know. imagine a little bit what have you achieved in my life what have you achieved in your life uh, like having 20 million dollars or something like that uh, more to like what can I pass down to my children? Chair? What can you pass down to your children? Okay, so that's very traditional thought and people think if I earn a lot of money and I pass down to my children then they will earn even more money and pass down to the children but there's a certain point where you don't need more money right? and you need more money only because you want to piss off somebody else but in your normal life you sleep in one bed you stay in one house you use one toilet at a time and uh, there is a limit it's not zero or everything but up to a certain point you would not need more but you need to be very happy so what happened during your life is that every time you are trying to earn more money or whatever you do even you are trying to play computer game or whatever you are exchanging time which is the only currency of life and you are selling time to buy money right time as you can know by now is a precious commodity it's the only thing you can't buy and you also keep losing and you keep on getting shorter and shorter your life as i speak to you you're dying and i'm also dying right so we're like in a you know, a titanic ship just sinking and sinking right so we're all going to die and if you were to exchange to sell money uh, to sell time to buy money then after a certain point it become a loss making business in the beginning when you have no money 
you need it. But after a certain point, you don't need it and you want to get some more, it's very futile. So think about at what point you'll be fine and what do you want to do along the way. So when I was uh, at 40, I start to think, how shall I exchange this time that I cannot save? I cannot put time and save it in my bank account and then later on uh, use it. I can't. So I thought I want to do something that is neglected. Things that people don't do. So I found that toilets are neglected. So I took up this subject and I started Restroom Association of Singapore. So I try to clean up the public toilet, the coffee shop toilet, the hawker center, the shopping centers, and I try to educate all these owners of the toilet that actually toilet is a profit-making business and not an expenditure. Because when they think of it as an expenditure, they try to save money, don't clean so often, don't employ professionally trained cleaners, don't put toilet paper and soap, and then actually they are losing a lot of business in the shopping center where the toilet is no good, the shopping center uh, is not successful. And the hotel, the offices, all the low morale will turn out to be bad rentals. So once they start to understand it, they start to invest in toilet. The toilet became better in Singapore after the restroom association started. So we call it RA. RA reminds you of movie, right? The guys like to watch this kind of movie because it's restricted artistic. Right? It usually have a little bit of flesh, you can see. But this is a taboo subject, toilet. So we put also call it RA uh, subject. And later on, I realized that there are uh, one, there are 15 toilets association around the world uh, without headquarters. So I started the World Toilet Organization. The World Toilet Organization service the global toilet community, which means everybody who is still alive, because the only proof that you are alive is you go to the toilet, right? So it supports self-image, productivity, health, psychological health, uh, return on investment, design, water conservation, tourism, everything in fact is related to the toilet, including engineering of course. Right? You have to design sewage system, you have to design sanitary wear, and for those without sewer, you have to design off-grid system. You have to design how to treat the shit so that it becomes energy or fertilizer and not end up polluting underground water or the river. So the World Toilet Organization idea is basically to solve toilet and sanitation problem holistically. But this subject is, is very, very quirky. So to speak about the subject, I use humor. Because around the world, the people don't want to talk about toilet. So they pretend that they never visited the toilet in their life. When you tell or uh, talk about toilet during dinner time, your mother will come along and say, hey, don't talk about toilet, it's so rude, you know, I'm eating, right? And then you start talking and then you say, your uncle is visiting, don't talk about toilet, right? And then when you're outside, they say, you talk about toilet, then it will be so embarrassing. People will, will, uh, people will laugh at you. So all these things became a, a very big um, taboo, but when you don't talk about something, you cannot improve. So I make it very funny, calling ourselves WTO, the World Toilet Organization. And by being, uh, calling ourselves the World Toilet Organization, we play a pun on the World Trade Organization. What is my strategy? Again, it is a anti-fragile system. If the World, Toilet, uh, the World Trade Organization got angry and sued me, then my agenda, my mission will go to the newspaper very big, right? So I was hoping that they sue me because if they sue me, I'll be very successful. If they don't sue me, I'll also be very successful because the media will continue to write about it. So you can design system that you are 
always going to be successful no matter what happened you can play a pun on them and you can actually get sued by them and what, what will happen is when World Trade Organization sue me then they will send me a cease and desist lawyer letter that means stop your nonsense right and then I will take this letter and go to the press and say oh oh I got sued and then it will be even more publicity right and then it eventually surely if let's say I have to change it maybe I should play a pun on Apple and call it a iPad or something like that right so it's actually still uh, a very uh, good leverage if you are able not to bother about what happened to you yeah if you worry about what happened to you you cannot be very good in your mission okay so the media came and coverage cover it very very well everywhere around the world and then later on I start to think ladies are queuing up for public toilet so I start to think why are ladies queuing up for public toilet I've never been to a ladies toilet so I went in and I saw that there was no urinal so the ladies needs a cubicle for every urinal that the men use and then I start to measure the time that they need to urinate the men I stand outside and the men and woman go in and the men come out first because first the woman need to queue up secondly even after she go into the cubicle she need to close the door hang the handbag hang the jacket put the plastic bag somewhere inspect seat cover wipe do kung fu stunts a lot of things so how do I know I ask them okay <laughs> and I ask the honest one and they tell me so I say my goodness they need 105 seconds to urinate and the man only need 35 seconds why because the man he just zip pee flick zip don't wash hand go out so it's very fast the girl has also a bad habit they have to gossip inside the toilet they have to talk about somebody outside the toilet but sometimes sometime, the things that they are saying about that person they thought is outside the toilet the guy the girl is in the cubicle so they create a lot of problem for their life but girls like to go to the toilet together and they need more mirror space so I started to write the new code of practice in the Singapore and I tell the government we have to change the whole design of ladies toilet so that we call it potty parity is fair both go in come out at the same time so they need a lot of cubicles they need a lot of mirror space and then the, in 2005 we managed to convince them to change the law so how to convince the government to change the law what's the incentive for them the incentive is that by waiting you lost productivity you have unhealthy people uh, very inconvenience and you're not a developed country and so when the government officers start calculating actually the productivity hours of waiting for going to the toilet is a lot and the service quality is poor and there's also no time for a toilet cleaner to clean it so all this once you convince them change the law so they change the law and this law has been changing a lot of countries code of practice as well so in in america they change all the federal building laws in hong kong in australia in uk they are changing so this is uh, the ladies are very happy with this new law thanks to uh, a man yeah? <laughs> so when you want to start to do something that changed the world you don't think about limitation don't think about what I don't have if you think oh based on what I have I go and do then you will be able to do very little because that is called limitation mindset if you think in abundance that means I don't what I don't have I will find people who have and they will join me and everybody will do this mission together not for me but for the change that they also want to change so you don't become a leader you invite people to a beautiful journey together and once you invite them they become your partners 
and then they would like to do it also. So if you walk away from today's lecture uh, and forgot everything I say because it's a lot, right? So I just want you to remember two letters. It's called OP. OP stands for other people. Okay. If you want money, find other people money. If you want talent, find other people talent. Other people authority, right? OPM, OPT, OP, whatever. And if you can find other people to do it, then you can do everything already, right? My mother taught me, everything is possible as long as you can find somebody else to do it, right? So, I successfully uh, learned from her and I never sweep the floor, never wash clothes, never cook, right? So how do you find a lot of people to work together with you is you find that they also got interest out of it. So if I tell story very well and it's very funny, then the media would come to me because the media gets free story from me. And in return, he gives me legitimacy, which will attract the politician to come to me because he wants to stand next to me so that he become popular in the media. Right? So I didn't give I couldn't give him something, but I could give him the media who is given by the media, not by me. So then the politician is standing there. The businessman wants to stand next to the politician because he wants to be his friend, right? So he will support him to do like World Toilet Summit or whatever, so that maybe they will do some business deal together, right? And, and, and so on and so forth. And the, and the professor in the university, of course, he wants to come and join this World Toilet Organization activity because he is very worried that if he don't publish, he will perish, right? So professor likes to write uh, uh, theses and then if they don't publish it, it's a problem. So they come to World Toilet Summit and speak about their latest findings and report and their job becomes secure. So you see, I give publicity, vote, security, media, money, everybody wins. Yeah? So what you want to do is to keep thinking like that. This is World Toilet Summit in 2001. I don't have money to host a World Toilet Summit. So I sell exhibition space for the event organizer. And then he says, if you sell so many booths, I will give you the meeting free of charge because you earn money for me. So I'm a very good salesman. I call a lot of people. I sell exhibition booth. Finally, he's happy. Then I brought the Minister of Environment, this man uh, in the yellow orchid, uh, Mr. Lim Suisse, and he says, let's clean up all our Singapore toilet. And along the way, because the minister came, other country politicians come, and then we have a very, very big World Toilet Summit with a very big publicity on the first round. So because of that, subsequent World Toilet Summit series uh, became uh, very popular because the media keeps on uh, the, the media keeps on writing about it and then I don't have to uh, sell exhibition space anymore because the uh, media is so valuable that a lot of politicians would like to host and uh, pay for every year. So we have World Toilet Summit uh, 2002 in Korea, 2003 in Taiwan, 2004 in Beijing, and it keeps on going. So I become some kind of like an Olympics authority that give out hosting rights and I don't need to pay for my annual event. So it's now 13 years and every year there's a World Toilet Summit. So you can see this is in uh, Seoul and in in Belfast, this is the Lord Mayor of Belfast and we host it inside the Parliament House and this is uh, Belfast when it is one day after the Irish Republican Army disarmed their rifle. You know, uh, Irish Republican Army, the IRA, was a, let's say, terrorist organization and they were trying to uh, fight the government and for many years a lot of people die but President Clinton went to make the peace and put some money to to negotiate that everybody 
don't fight. So there was some leftover money and I told the Lord Mayor of Belfast, why don't you use this money to host a World Toilet Summit? And he says, how does the Toilet Summit link to the IRA disarmament? I say, because, because we stopped the fighting, Belfast is now open for international conference. So they said, that's a very good message. So we could use that and, uh, and made a very good uh, conference in Belfast. So this is a leverage model. Yeah? We have him to uh, wear the rings and call him Lord of the Rings. Yeah? Of course, I have to also do the same to encourage him. Then in Moscow, we went to Mayor Lutskov and he hosted the World Toilet Summit and he showed us how the cosmonaut pee in space. Right? So, I don't understand Russian. I don't know how to connect there. So I know somebody in the KGB and then they connect me. So KGB also can be a very good partner. Right? You don't need to be uh, bad, no? can be very good. In India, we have World Toilet Summit and the President of India is uh, hosted the World... He has a question. Okay, question. What is KGB? Oh, it's the secret uh, police of... It's like CIA, right? But I know according to the public media, CIA is good, KGB is bad, but actually the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, this is uh, the President of India and he opens the World Toilet Summit together with six minister and a member of the Gandhi family. So you see a simple idea coming out of Singapore goes everywhere and it's all success bringing success. The Crown Prince of Holland came and, and speak at this event as well and uh, last year he became the King of Holland. So we have very good friends at high places because of toilets. Last year, World Toilet Summit was hosted in, uh, in the Indonesia and we closed down 9 kilometers of the downtown to do a World Toilet Carnival. So you can see, very nice. So this is a picture of myself when I was, uh, I think, three years ago. And probably open defecating in a village in Singapore. Singapore at that time was poorer than Sri Lanka, poorer than Cambodia, and poorer than Myanmar. Yeah? So if we look at this, in Bangalore, I took out this picture, same things happening. This is the Silicon Valley of India. Right? So. I think if we can solve the problem in Singapore, we should be able to solve the problem in India. So here are the world, so we created World Toilet Day. 19 November was the founding day of World Toilet Organization. We declare it World Toilet Day and the whole world celebrate it. So actually it's quite easy, you know. You just declare this is World Toilet Day and everywhere in the world they celebrate World Toilet Day. So for the last 13 years, they celebrate it so much that it become a United Nation World Toilet Day. Last year, the whole United Nation, 193 member country, adopted 19 November as UN World Toilet Day. It was the first time Singapore government has ever tabled a UN resolution and it's about toilet. So we created all these World Toilet Summit, Singapore, Korea, Taiwan, Beijing, Belfast, Moscow, New Delhi, Macau, Hainan, and then also uh, Durban, South Africa, and uh, in uh, Indonesia, and uh, this year again they're hosting it. We teach the poor to start sandy shop, to start producing toilet and to sell toilet. So for $1,000 they start toilet and they sell toilet. So these are jobs created for housewives, they earn $2 every time they sell a toilet and uh, uh, the factory earn uh, $5. And by business, we can solve the sanitation problem. Later on, 
we got President Clinton to come along and make an endorsement too. So this is how we leverage step by step, higher and higher, so that people of high uh, weightage would come to support also. In 2008, Time Magazine named me Hero of the Environment, so that helps a lot also. And then I went to New York to give out train tickets for them to move from New York Grand Station to Flushing, a town called Flushing. So we send them Flushing and we have 135 media overnight, paid by Clorox. Then we got Matt Damon to volunteer to create what is called a toilet strike. He said, if we don't solve this problem where two and a half billion people don't have toilet, then I'm never going to the toilet until this problem is solved. So, of course, he didn't keep his promise. Huh? But, <laughs> but it was a very important message. Yeah? Uh, afterwards, I will show you a video. And uh, this film went to Cannes Lions Festival uh, last year. I also thought maybe we should make a movie. So I wrote the story of a movie called Ren Ren You Fen which means it's not doesn't mean everybody's business it actually means everybody have shit right? in mandarin yeah so uh, the movie everybody business uh, went on the cinema on uh, december last year and i've never done a movie before i just write the story i don't know how to make the script everything so what do i do i went to google how to make a movie right and then it came out, oh, 16 steps. No, first, you write a story, then you get a producer, then you get funding, then you get casting, and stars, and all that, then ed shooting, editing, and distribution. Well, a lot of things to do, right? So I say, I don't want to do. I use what? OP. Other people, right? So I asked the most famous pro uh, producer, director in Singapore called Jack Neo. You know Jack Neo? So I say, Jack Neo, Here's a story, you're going to make money. So Jack Neal get the Singapore government to invest $1 million in this production and we have a movie. And then I was so happy because my idea works, right? So sometimes you think you don't have resource, but you don't need resource. You only need to convince people. Last year, the United Nations made World Toilet Day a UN day. So now it is forever cast in stone forever that all the countries in the world celebrate World Toilet Day. So 19 November, of course, huh, Taylor University, all the students will celebrate World Toilet Day because they all have to go to the toilet, right? In fact, they celebrate every day. Lah. But on 19 November, please try to make something spectacular about it. Lah. Like no video camera in all the toilet or whatever. No, not a good suggestion, <laughs> but some other ideas. Okay. So, this is the kind of very in-the-face message. Yeah? You have to think creatively all the time and you'll be able to, to do things like that. Right? Two months ago, I was invited to the Indian Today Conclave. India Today Conclave is where all the who's who are there. So they say, tonight, Salman Khan is coming. Who is Salman Khan? Huh? He's like God in India, you know. He's the mega star for Bollywood. There's Shah Rukh Khan, Amir Khan, and Salman Khan. So I worked with the, the compare and I said, uh, can you, I will ask a question and you will point at me and let me ask the question to him. She says, okay, right. So I asked Salman Khan, you are so sexy, right? And toilet is such a big problem in India. We need to make toilet sexy. So can you do something? So he start to take out his shirt button and raise 140,000 US dollar for the World Toilet Organization to build toilet in India. <laughs> on the spot, you know. And this was live broadcast on national television in India. So it was very amazing because I didn't even know it was on national television until the next day when I went to the airport in New Delhi to come home and the custom officer who is going to chop my passport looked at the photograph and said 
are you with Salman Khan last night on TV? I said yes. Can I take a photograph with you? And then he called all his friends to take photograph with me because they are Salman Khan's friends, you see. So that's the first time in my life custom officer take photograph with me now. <laughs> so this is an example of leveraging on the spot, right? OP, right? Other people, power, brand power. So I also thought in the future I want to dream of World Toilet Museum. So I got a Denmark famous museum architect to design this museum. It looked like Guggenheim Museum, but just more beautiful because on the roof, if you look down, it's actually three toilet row row into one. So this not yet ready, but I'm hoping we can build it in the Iskandar in Johor. So other than non other than toilet, I also do uh, dialogue in the dark museum, blindness. Uh, uh, I get blind guides to guide you guys into the darkness, walk one hour inside the museum with a blind stick and then the blind can see and you cannot see and you rely on the blind and after one hour you come out you completely admire how the blind can handle such a walk in one hour in the dark and you can't so it changes that you never get afraid of poor, uh, uh, blind people anymore in your life so there's a, a very good museum from Germany in Johor uh, I bought 10 acres of land and created Kampung Temasek because in Singapore, no more Kampung. No? So buying 10 acres in Singapore, cannot, no, no, no such money. Right? So in Johor, we create this and Taylor University is uh, sending you guys out there. So first batch is coming and please sign up and tell and find out how to go there. Stay overnight. So. When I'm free, I do vandalism. I, I create sculpture and put illegally on the street corner. So this is Albert Einstein visiting Singapore in 1922, meeting Mr. Mayor, and I put it on Mayor Road. So I think, again, this is our anti-fragile system. I put it on street corner illegally. So what will happen normally? The government will come in arrest me right but it's now eight years no no arrest why because it's beautiful so the people are jogging they're cycling they're passing by they look they laugh right it makes their life happy and it tells people that this mayor road is by name after mr mayor and albert einstein came to raise fund from him so there's a historic fact but designed in bud simpson style so this kind of message, the government said, I cannot remove it because people will be very upset with me, I'll lose vote. So without license, you can do, still do things, huh? even in Singapore. Huh? This is another one. There is a fort buried under this park. So I said, people don't know there is a fort under this park. So I went to build two soldiers made of concrete and I design it and I supervise it and then it stays there for now six years and the government didn't remove it they're very happy so recently they want to widen the road and they tell me can I take it out after I widen the road I put it back on the new position I say fine as long as you don't damage it it's fine so illegal thing can become legal So how come I can find so much energy to do so many things, right? Including come here and talk to you, also take energy, right? So every day body have 24 hours, but you may be very tired and you have less hour. But if you have more energy, you have more hour. So how do you have more energy when it's fun? When it is fun, you have energy. <coughs> When it is boring, you have no energy. So the world is not divided into easy or difficult thing. It is divided into fun or boring thing. Okay? So I will explain. Difficult things are more fun. Easy things are very boring. Okay? For example, if you are playing the computer game, level 1, is it fun? No fun. Level 2, also no fun. 
do you play level one and then after you finish you go back to level one again and finish and you play five times level one no you always want to go more and more difficult the more difficult the more fun when is it the most fun when you die you know <laughs> when you do until cannot then you try again right but this time uh, you do level one two three four five very fast because it's so easy right so all the easy one you want to quickly get rid of it it's boring right so in life is the same all the things you want to do choose the very difficult one because you are so smart and you're so clever that you don't deserve to waste your time on easy things right so if somebody asks you oh, you this is very difficult no you say yeah no that's why i'm doing it not you <laughs> because i'm clever you see i don't know about you then he said i'll prove to you i'm even cleverer than you i do even more difficult things. so that is the way you uh, get fun and when you have fun you have a lot of energy and when you have more energy you have more equivalent time right and if you want to have even more time what do you do get other people to do it right so what is the two letters op very good this class is very learn very fast no? if you do op you know what happened 200 hours a day you can get because you can get a lot of people to do right so let's say this class we are teaching not just here but we're also teaching on the virtual classroom so the people who are watching this on their computer screen this is op also so you're not just one class but you're leveraging on people in every different countries i don't even know where they come from where are you from maybe you are from iraq or you are from lithuania or poland or china i don't know special mention to qatar and portugal say hi to qatar and portugal why yes, because they are the highest number even more than Malaysia. oh yeah that's right so welcome to this class i hope you're enjoying it so far <laughs> so not satisfied with all these things i start to think why is there four billion poor people in the world earning less than eight dollars a day that are not inside our formal economy so i thought we should help them help themselves right you know this picture no? this is leonardo da vinci yeah famous picture okay so i thought we should solve global poverty you know the base of the pyramid there are seven billion people in the world on the top of the pyramid there are three billion middle class and rich people like all of you here right and these three billion people constitute almost the entire market economy formal economy of the world so whatever you produce you produce for the rich and middle class but very few products and services are produced for the poor and this right now becomes the most exciting marketplace because the three billion are saturated already the european and the american are buying less now and the factories growth in china are more and more so who are they going to sell to they're going to sell to the lower income people and there are four billion new customers so we thought this is very timely that we created the bop base of pyramid world trade convention in singapore 28th to 30th of august we will be in singapore and uh, please come it's not september sorry it's 28th to 30th of august in singapore and we would have the whole world doing business this is the first time there's an industrial show for the poverty marketplace the base of the pyramid we call it the bop and also i borrow money from the bank which is also op eh? other people money <laughs> when we want to build a new design center for the bop so i borrow money from the bank this is 12 million dollars and uh, singapore dollars and we are going to make everybody work around the clock in the whole world uh, to collaborate to design product and services distribution to the poor 
and the end result is that we will be, have healthy, happy, educated, dignified, loving family like this everywhere around the world and once they are able to reach this level they can grow up with more, more investment when the poor people get charity, nothing happens when the poor people get jobs, business they make profit, they earn income the multiplier effect starts the economic cycle starts to grow very fast Singapore was very poor in 1965 and it became the first world country in 1990 only 25 years because we did not rely on charity we rely on business right. so what is happiness? you want to be able to decide your life that is autonomy right? if you are able to have the freedom to decide the rules of the game of your life that is one ingredient of happiness in order to be able to play by your own rules you have to be good at it so mastery you are good at something whatever it is good engineers or good business people whatever you are doing be good at it right if you are a child if you are a son be a good son if you are a father be a good father if you are a colleague be a good colleague if you are an engineer be a good engineer whatever you do you are good at it you are a good person right then do it because there is a purpose if you only do it for yourself what do you benefit you benefit one person and that person is going to die so a little bit wasteful right but if you do it for a purpose of everybody lots of people then you find a lot of energy because higher meaning will drive you to feel really good about yourself so what I learned is that telling jokes is works wonders yeah? because I, if I didn't tell jokes then more people will fall asleep right right now only 90% fall asleep but it would be 100% fall asleep if I don't uh, tell jokes right but no lah so far uh, I think all awake okay. so <laughs> the other thing is that if you chase fame, ego, money status those goals are actually bad masters if money become your master it will destroy you huh? if they are like fire you see uh, if fame become your master it will also destroy you I want to be famous no matter what right so somewhere along the line it will destroy you so sometimes they say uh, a woman also destroy you lah, but sometimes most of the time a woman actually make you very much better strong like my wife huh? make me very good as you can see right <laughs> so, so what you want to uh, do well is you need to have optimism you have to believe that things can be better by you and by the people you mobilize you have to love you have to accept and don't grumble whatever is the situation you accept and then you go on from there and then have harmony don't fight and just know that because life is carrying on you there's no rehearsal you just go and do it right not even Nike say it like, you also should say it right so a business plan does not guarantee you success when you are born your mother did not write a business plan if your mother wrote a business plan she would realize that at a certain number of years uh, later uh, she will run out of money that actually you are lost making business because the payback of a child is not very very profitable but the mother has a different plan when the mother see the baby she immediately saw this child healthy go to school go to Taylor University uh, on other university as well and then um, get married got, got job get married and bring her grandchildren in 
maybe three seconds, she has her plan. And that is not a plan, that's a mission. And she will do everything that she can to ensure that this will not fail. And how many percent of mother fail? Very few. High 90s, maybe 97, 99% of mother succeed. And all your mother succeed, that's why you're in this room. Right? All your mother succeed, that's why you're having a computer to watch this lecture. Right? So the reality is mothers are more successful than business plan. So how do you want to make success? Think like a mother. The mother attitude to the child is higher than the mother attitude to his her job, you know. The mother go to work, eh? the mother don't take the job the same way as to take the child. But if she does take the job in the same way as they take the child, then the then the success will be amazing. And all the men should try to behave like mothers as well. So good karma is important. Be moral, be ethical. And then because you are moral and ethical, you don't always need to be legal. You know why you don't always need to be legal? Because to innovate, you have to break rules. To break rules, you have to be illegal. Putting sculptures on the roadside is illegal, right? Trying to play a pun on World Trade Organization is illegal, but it's moral and ethical. So if you are moral and ethical, you are good for the public. So don't worry. Most likely, lah, not guaranteed. Most likely, you will not be arrested. <laughs> okay. So, coming to the end, if you try to understand yourself, try to know you are going to die, and try to make it useful, and don't try to think for yourself too much. To a certain point, you need to survive, but beyond that, try to think of others. Then your life will be so much richer. Right? And if you, this is a lot to read, but you must love people, then they will love you. Very easy, right? You must uh, not be afraid. Because when you're afraid, you have arrogance. You have jealousy. You have all the small, small feeling, all the narrow-mindedness because you're afraid. Once you're not afraid, you don't mind. All these things doesn't come and plague you, right? Then to love, you need to have courage. To share, also you need to have courage. And then dream your wildest dream because it costs you nothing. It's free of charge. Even you dream small dream also same, dream also cost you nothing, might as well dream big dreams, right? So if you want to succeed, you have a clear idea of how it look like in the end. Then you work backward, it's faster. If you don't have a clear idea, it's very hard to reach there. And if you work, work with all your heart, then you are very irresistible. Very few people work with all their heart. They're very easily distracted by the computer and Facebook and all these things. So if you focus on what you're doing, much better. Coll collaborate with everybody. And if nobody said you're crazy, then you're not innovating. You need somebody to come and say, you must be xiao la. How can this happen? Stop dreaming, man. Crazy. You know? you know why these people tell you that? Because they can't do themselves. So you say, it's all right. These people are there saying all these things, not because it's true or not true, because in their position, in their little narrow-minded world, it's like that. But not mine, right? So you have to think differently. So now I talk to you for so long, my life just got shorter. I have only 8,340 days more to live before my 80th birthday. So you see how big sacrifice I do for you and also you on the, <laughs> on the computer. Yeah? So do you think that I'm going to waste a single minute of my life? No. You bet it. No. Because it, life is so precious. Right? There's only one life, no rehearsal, so no time to quarrel, only time to learn. Thank you very much. So uh, you think about question. This is again uh, very illegal. It's playing a pun on the on the. 
<laughs> James Bond, but I didn't uh, do 007, it's actually Lu. So uh, I will show a video, and uh, it's three minutes, inspire you a little bit. After making you so bored, I will entertain you and bring you to the movie. And then after that, please ask me a question. <laughs> When we are children, our parents tell us not to talk about shit. This is a really serious problem. What you don't talk about, you cannot improve. A lot of people call me Mr. Toilet. I'm really proud when I hear that because it gives an identity to the world that I do. 40% of the world population still do not have access to a simple toilet. Shit is like fire. If you manage properly, the fire can cook your meal. If you don't manage it, it burns down your house. If you manage shit, it becomes a fertilizer. If you don't manage it, it kills you. <laughs> All the surface water in India are contaminated by feces. 1.5 million children under 5 a year in the world die unnecessarily. You have to have clean water, you have to have safe sanitation. A rich man stay next to a slum. The flies doesn't know a poor man from a rich man. So the rich man is probably eating the shit of the poor man. You better help them get toilets or you will eat their shit. Think about it. We are hosting the World Toilet Summit. This has been an international event every year since 2001. The people say, why should I use a toilet? It's fresh air outside. I can chit chat with my friends while I'm squatting there. A big breakthrough will happen when we look at the poor as if they are customers. We have to sell them products that are very beautiful and sexy. Once this becomes object of desire, if you don't have, you are not keeping up with the bonuses. We want toilet to become a status symbol for the poor so that they feel proud to own a toilet. Just like a Louis Vuitton handbag. <laughs> we are actually breaking the taboo on sanitation in the global news. World Toilet Day is 19 November every year. We have the big squad. We are protesting the plight of the 2.5 billion people that still do not have access to a toilet. The fact is I think about toilet every moment. Her life is only 80 years. I'm 52. If I'm going to spend 28 years consuming ostentatiously just to have a diamond watch that I can't read the time because it's too sparkling, it makes no sense. Doing social work that is creating some impact. I think it's better to die like that. I think we can see the day that everybody on planet Earth will have access to clean toilets any day, any time. Okay, so please, question time. Hi, um, hello. My name is Arthur. Um, you know, this, this now you mentioned that the difficult things are the fun things, right? Have you ever encountered something that's so difficult it's no longer fun? It's so difficult, you just keep going and going, you keep failing and failing, it's not fun anymore, isn't it? Have you reached that? Or how do you keep, how do you keep motivated in the, that situation? Every day I find this type of problem. It's not like so easy to be successful. Uh, most of the time it's difficult. That's why it's fun. For example, when I had the difficult boss, it was no fun. But because it was no fun, I have to find fun. So I have to get rid of him by resigning from the job, right? So, so you don't stay in a no fun situation because a no fun situation happens to you all the time, right? So when you meet a no-fun situation, you 
look for a fun situation. Maybe you don't need to leave the place, but you see it from another point of view. Either you motivate the person which can be motivated, or if cannot, you avoid the person. So you can focus on another angle. And all the time, if you keep looking uh, for the fun part, it will be fun. And why do you, how, how do you get yourself to keep on looking for the fun part is that you, you know that you have no time to lose. Because why? Because you are going to die. See? Because the time is so short. If you spend time to quarrel with him, your life also get shorter. So again, nothing. So when you want to waste time quarreling with him, you quickly run away from him. So you go and find somebody more interesting or find something better to do. So as you find that time is very precious, huh? you have no time to quarrel. You have only time to love. Then life is fun. Yeah? Yeah, you, but if you keep on thinking like that, but first of all, you must keep on reminding that you are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> because that's gonna help you a lot, you know. It's gonna motivate you a lot. Because hey, wait, wait, wait. You mean I'm gonna quarrel with this guy? It's gonna take me one hour? No, no, no. I have no time. I'm gonna use this one hour to do something more fun, right? Like that. Uh, just want to wonder. Uh, seeing how successful you are already, why did you decided to take your masters uh, last year? Thank you. I always felt inadequate not having a degree because I thought that people who have degree are smarter. But of course, later on I realized it's not true. La. <laughs> <laughs> but by then I already enrolled, right? So I might as well finish it, right? The other reason is that my mother has three children and none of her children actually graduated and all her siblings are showing her photograph of their children and grandchildren wearing that square hat, right? So she felt also a bit inadequate that her children never managed. Lah. But she was not complaining. Lah. But because she mentioned it, I thought, can I do it, lah, right? <laughs> so so I, uh, I think the pride of taking a photograph with your mother is quite rewarding. At least I cycle myself that way, that's why I managed to finish it. The other thing is that public policy was an area that I have totally no idea, was zero. So I have no idea about this, this subject. So I thought going to university would be very nice. And I was motivated when I went to the bureaucrat and every time I proposed a good idea to them, they will reject, you know. So I said, why is it that my ideas are so smart and every time they reject? So let me go to study and enter into their mind. And then after I finished the master degree, I created the four jacks theory. So this one original. No? <laughs> I created the four jacks theory. So this is maybe so far never taught to a class before. Huh? The first jack is when you give an innovative idea to a civil servant in the government, his first default is reject. That's the first check. Reject. Okay. Why reject? Because too troublesome. Extra work. Risk. Innovation means non-status quo. Change. Very risky. So they are incentivized not to make mistake. Don't make mistake. No need to perform. Also can get the job, right? So reject. If you insist that he do something, he will activate the second jack, which is called eject. <laughs> Not my department. You should go the other department. So he'll send you run around all the different departments and everyone will reject and eject. So you get eject here, there, there, there. Then you come back to this guy and say, everybody say it's your department. By the time you, most people give up already. Right? But if you still have energy, then he will activate the third jack, it's called deject. Deject means I don't say yes, I don't say no, I see your battery, four bar become three bar, two bar, red light, flat. Then I'm very happy you go away, right? I got rid of you, right? So two weeks later you call, you say, oh, we're still thinking, we're not, don't call us, we'll call you, right? Hollywood like that, right? 
So the whole idea is they don't like new ideas. They want to get rid of you. And if you still have energy, then you go to minister or their boss or perm sec or higher level, right? Then you manage to convince them. Then he thought, he heard that, wow, they like your idea. Then he will activate the last jack. It's called hijack. <laughs> he said that idea was his all the time. So this is the basic how government bureau crazy are incentivized. So right now I want to redesign something to incentivize these people to become mission driven. They are not bad people. Huh? They are good people. Bad incentive. So if you resign the design, redesign the incentive, they'll become good people. Next question. Um, thank you for your lovely talk. Actually, I wanted to ask you, um, what inspired you personally to start the WTO? Do you have any personal experiences that Yeah, it was uh, boredom. <laughs> boredom is very uh, punishing, you know. When you are bored, life has no meaning, you know. So boredom happened during the financial crisis in the year 1998 to 2000. It was really you. I was in the building industry. I started a building material rooftop factory in Kluang, brick factory in Kulai. Uh, this uh, uh, acoustic partition factory in Senai. Business was very good in the boom years, but when the recession came, orders go down, you know, business were not good, and it was very boring. So I start to think, hey, do I need more money? No. Do I have enough to retire? Yes. Then what shall I do that is more meaningful than this? Then I start to do the restroom association. At first, I don't know about the world problem. But because I start, it leads to the next thing and the next thing. So eventually, World Toilet Organization. Now, BOP Hub, Kampong Temasek. So it becomes like addictive. I start one business, earn out 16 businesses. Now I started one NGO and turn out seven NGO. So it will continue like that. And I also hope to affect you so afterwards, we will also propose some projects for you all to do your crowdfunding and to create projects so that more and more things and more and more uh, people can be mobilized. When you want to do something, always remember, don't be a leader, be a servant. If you serve people, the other people become leader, then they will like to do. If you are the leader, then they don't like to be your servant. So they prefer to have a servant. So when you want to mobilize the world, you mobilize them so that everyone lead initiative of their own. Um, actually, um, during lunch, you uh shared with me uh, your definition of a millionaire. So I thought it would be really nice if you could just share, share that again with, uh, with all of us. Yeah. So in today's definition of success is if you got more money, then you are more successful. Or at least you got more money and show off that you got more money, you are more successful. Right? If, because people don't know, then no, you are not successful. right? Uh, I think that is a very selfish incentive system. It, if you have $10 million and you don't share it with the rest of the room, especially if you don't share it with me, it has no meaning to me. Right? So who cares if you have $10 million? Right? But if you are helping all of us, then you become relevant to us. So I think that the new definition of a millionaire should not be one who have a million dollar but one who have improved the life of a million people that's much harder right but that's also much more meaningful 
So what we should do in the new design of the world is to say anybody who has money is their own business. We're not interested. You can go and keep it. But we're only interested in people who are relevant to improve our life. And if that is so, then the world will change. Because vanity is always there. If the people who are rich want to also not just be a money millionaire, but to be a relevant millionaire, then he will help improve people's life. So what we'll do is, instead of racing to the top, we would be racing to the middle so that the people at the top of the money table would want to move the people from the bottom of the money table to the middle and they come middle. Maybe they will not all be the same like communism fail, but they'll get nearer and I think the world will be more equitable like that. Similarly, for all the corrupt politicians, I cannot understand why they need the money because they can't be seen spending it, right? So if you have all the money and you cannot spend it, the moment you spend it, you're going to be questioned why are you having a Richard Mouse watch? You know, recently there is a Indonesian general who has a Richard Mouse watch, limited edition, and he was giving this press conference when somebody asked you, how come you have this watch? And you know what? He got shocked. He don't know what to say. You know what he did? He took it out and threw it on the ground and said, this is a fake one. I bought it from China. It was only $500. China fake. This is not real. And then the reporter went to pick it up and it was still working, right? So, <laughs> but this is the example, you know. People thought that money is very important. But in reality, happiness has no relationship with money after your stomach is full and after you have a simple place to stay and basic life. After that, you can choose. Of course, you can still choose to fly a private jet and own a Ferrari, but it's none of our business, right? It's only our business if you are related in some way in improving our life. Yeah, I have some fun question. Okay, so I have two questions. So, have you been to our tailor's toilets? And um, what do you think that we can improve our toilets? Actually, I, I like the toilet because the male and female uh, are washing their hands together. You know? <laughs> You see, normally if you put the wash area inside the toilet, then uh, it will be very wet. Now you move all the washing outside, then the inside of the toilet will be only dry. Uh, so it's, it's better. Lah. Uh, and when the girls are watching the boys, uh, the boys' behavior also better. <laughs> How do you think we can improve our toilet? Yes. I think first of all, uh, what you need to do is to make the toilet not owned by the school, but owned by the student. So you create some ownership uh, where, I don't know, you've got to design it, discuss among the student, where it, in, in primary school what we did is the Every floor, the class will own the toilet on that floor and then they will decorate it. They will put you know, dinosaur, flower, fish, whatever they choose, their free choice. They will draw it, put laminate, stick on it and then they will tell all their friends, don't dirty my toilet. And then suddenly, the toilet becomes very clean because the ownership is by the community who uses it. But once a property is owned by an authority, the government, the university, then there, there tends to be lower uh, ownership. So you have to think how to design it so that the people are actually 
making it nice and owning it. Maybe put all their names there. Or I don't know. The best is put all their photographs there. I think it will be very clean. <laughs> I would like really to thank you very much for a very engaging um, talk. I think I have also used other people to deliver my lecture, so I've, I've learned. And um, uh, uh, after this, I think uh, we promise some of you to present the, their projects today, whereby we will get uh, Jack to comment on them. And I think he also has a project or two to, to propose to those who didn't have projects yet to work with him to crowdfund and this is both for students on campus as well as the online students. So uh, with this, I uh, would like you to uh, join me again to thank him, really, for his talk today. Thank you. So we, 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 uh, we said there are five people who will present. I, uh, if you are ready, please come and either hook your computer or uh, or use my computer, I'm fine with that as well. If you don't have a slides and you want to come and um, just talk about it, we are, we are, we are okay. Um, who's ready to present? There were five people, I think, indicated so that you, Rick? Yeah, come. So while you are setting up, yep. I, I will tell you Please, about, please. Yeah. Yep. So uh, this is my OP to you. Right? <laughs> the World Toilet Organization is very famous. It's famous all over the world. Yet, the World Toilet Organization is not a good fundraiser. It didn't know how to go out there and ask people to uh, support it financially. And of course, the, I, I work for free, but the employees need uh, to be paid some money. And what I thought is, why don't we get this class and the ones on the internet to think of idea how to create merchandise with the WTO logo on it and to sell products that would raise funds to sustain World Toilet Organization. So it could be anything. It could be water, drinking water that is designed in the World Toilet Organization fashion. It could be t-shirts. It could be um, very, very uh, fun things running a toilet cafe you know WC cafe if you turn McDonald's MC cafe upside down you get WC cafe right <laughs> so this can be fun projects to do and I think if you if you can start to have ideas how to fundraise for World Toilet Organization through crowdfunding, I think it could be very interesting. And I will tell you also how to get all this original idea in the toilet, of course. <laughs> when you go to the toilet, your mind is open. You are, you are always very creative in the toilet. Do you know why? Because to urinate, you have to hold your breath for a second. During the second when the urine comes out, some ideas will go inside your brain <laughs> because a vacuum is created. So please go ahead and think and I look forward to your ideas. And, and um, I uh, also spoke to Jack, so he's going to join our course. So he will, once he creates the, uh, the profile, I'm going to make an announcement so everyone knows about that and then you, you'll be able to communicate with him as well as share uh, the ideas of the merchandise that uh, he talked about uh, with him. Yep. Toilet paper with... Uh, US dollar. That's done before, but uh, maybe toilet paper with uh, politicians, campaigns... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so now we are going to listen to Yuri uh, giving him some feedback. Good, uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and good evening, sir. Uh, this is my proje uh, my project. The title is New Crop for Orphans. And 
the what what is what my project above is present the whole new T-shirt with design uh, with designer pattern to often during their cultural festival in Malaysia, because uh, every times right uh, during our children uh, children times, parents will present us a new cross during uh, like Chinese New Year, Hari Raya, uh, Deepavali, but often doesn't have this opportunity to get from parents. So I come up with an idea that uh, can like uh, crowdfunding from the public, uh, from global or others to buy the new t-shirt for the orphans during their festival, the cultural festival, to show love and give uh, warmest years for them and okay uh, this is my customer everyone who cares the orphans in eh? okay everyone who cares the orphans is my customer and adult who willing to present a small gift for orphans and compassionate peoples Malaysia or even global okay and this is my estimate expenses that I would like to crowdfunding on possible. I am to have, uh, I am to go for 25 ho children homes in Malaysia. And I estimate that every homes, every children, children's home have uh, 25 orphans. After that, I estimate one tissue is 20 ringgit. And I times the number of uh, the orphans and I get uh, one, uh, if uh, twelve thousand five hundred ringgit, and plus the post state rates above uh, 13,250 uh, 13, uh, uh, to crowd fund, uh, so that every single orphans are uh, doing their cultural festival can get a new shirt, new T-shirt, and I also plan to have like uh, when I get the T-shirt, I put some words in it, I write it, write some write some uh, sentence and the blessing blessing word and put into the cross and uh, post to the children's home. Okay, um, this is my functional, function metrics that I want to find other people's, just like, uh, so you just say, uh, to, yeah, OP, yeah, to like, uh, and, uh, to like do the jobs. Uh. And first I want to find a designer who able to draw creatively and also enthusiasm to help uh, to give love to the orphans, design a t-shirt for the attribute and logistic who deal with the complex listed because uh, I'm not only sent to one orphan's home but 25 so it's uh, quite a lot to do to, to like manage the complex uh, the, the, the orders and also I want to find a project manager who like willing to uh, get this, uh, to deliver this project with empathy, passionate and dedicated and also well communicating and I'm uh, uh, so initially I think of uh, maybe, uh, maybe I can become a leader to take this project but after I uh, heard your talk then I learned that I'm not necessary to be a project manager but I can find someone to be the project manager to get this thing run but I can uh, serve what they need. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think it's very good and uh, you need to make people very excited. Uh, probably, I was just thinking there must be a lot of t-shirts that are left over after festival sales. After festival Nobody wants to buy those festival shirts, right? How could you uh, leverage these people to also give it to you? Okay. Like, after Christmas, nobody buy Christmas thing. After Chinese New Year, nobody buy. So, yeah. all the festival thing actually become obsolete until the next year. Oh, uh, so, so, so this one is like, the idea is to do this is like, uh, we just are uh, like become a parents. Everyone become a parents. Like just uh give up some money, give some money to design a whole new T-shirt and present to orphans, like the really whole whole new one. And they will like maybe once in a lifetime 
they will get only one new T-shirt. Mm. So, so maybe you say for everyone that is given, another one is donated by the clothing company. And then the clothing company can become seen by the public as humanitarian and they get the, some publicity of it from the media. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Also, Yuri, do you think you will need uh, someone to help you with the campaign? Yes. So this is not being mentioned here. The public relation person. Yeah. So this to run a, a, a successful, uh, possible campaign, you really need to communicate your your message in a very powerful manner. So that's what Jack was talking about. You need to get people excited. So to raise 13,000, this is not a small amount of money. So it's, it's not just simply you go sit there and say, I want to raise money for the, for the, uh, for the orphan. So maybe you, you needed someone with expertise in the social media and, and things like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so, so you, um, <coughs> Eric, you need to mention your, your profile name in case students from the online community would like to join you. Is, is this project out there already on the project uh, page? Yeah, already on the project page and it names are uh, New Clothes for Orphans. Yeah, it's like the titles there, New Clothes for Orphans. And uh, thank you, uh, to, um, yeah. Mr. Jack, Mr. Jack and Dr. Mustard. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, hi, I'm going to present about my project. Uh, in the open learning, it's called Ride Sharing Apps. But yesterday, I was like uh, reading, uh, watching the video about the BFM. The Frida Liu is like uh, talking about the acron acronym. So I came with this idea. It's called Safe Ride. So we are. I aim to create a safe, active, fun, and easy platform for the society to commute through the carpooling. So the safe actually stay for, uh, stand for safe, active, fun, and easy. Okay. So why, why do I have this idea is that first, uh, there are challenges for me. Like every day I go to college, uh, go to, I come to uni, if I late for like one minute, then there will be jam. There will be traffic congestions, especially during when I go to uni and when we go back. It's like around five to six, so it will be jammed in Taylor's also. So the second one, the air pollution. So there's a lot of car, then there will be some green gas that yeah, every engineer know, and the inconsistent of the public transport system. Sometimes the taxi will charge you higher and the bus will come, will came late for you. So for the solution I can provide is I create this app to keep track of the transport and the, the route that the user posts on this app. So people can know that, okay, I'm going to this, I'm going to this destination. If there's other people that actually have the same destination as me, they can pinpoint at the route, then I can pick them up. So people will ask, uh, is it safe? to use this app. So for me, I create this uh, uh, in the val value proposition there. I make it, I make the apps have this called passenger rating system. So whenever the passenger reach the destination safe, then they can actually rate this driver. Is this driver good or bad? So that people will know that. So the next user will know that this driver have what kind of problem? Okay, next is the, I can, I design the apps to have this called fare and payment calculation algorithm. So if the driver decided to charge the passenger, so these apps can actually calculate that based on the mileage and how the petrol, then they can give the passenger like basic how much they need to pay for the ride. And my Target customer is the student, that uh, student or company colleague that every day 
they have the same destination to the university and to their company. The next one is the event participant. So you know that there's this event in this area, but you don't have transport. So the other participants can provide you this, so you can take a ride together with them. The third, third one is emergency. If your car breaks down in the morning, then you decided to take this ride, so you just pinpoint the location, the other user will come and pick you up. Okay, my estimated value is about 15K based on the apps developer that I'm discussed with. He said it's around 10 to 15K to create an, an app, Sony. Okay, the people that I need is like project manager. Project manager that yeah, help me manage my project well. And, uh, and of course, I need an application developer that can help me write the apps. The next one is the marketing. I need people that can actually help me promote my, this app to the society so that people will know that this app exists. Okay, then that will be all for my project. <laughs> So who else will benefit other than the person who is taking the ride? Uh, the participants, like the people that they use public transport, public transport every day. See, uh, public transport can cost around 150 to, to come to uni, or you can take a taxi, it's around 10 ringgit. But if you use this app, Based on my calculations, like for the normal MyV, it's actually cost 0 0.22 cent at 22 cents per kilometer. So if you decided to use, to ride other people to go through carpooling, it's actually cheaper than, than taking the public transport. You register the people who are driving? Yeah, people can go register on the... So they know who is the driver and who is the passenger? Yeah, yeah. they need to know. Yeah. Something happened? Yes. If you have big enough carpooling, maybe you should claim carbon credit from the carbon market because you, you save the number of cars or number of trips. Do you know about carbon credit market? Yeah. If you save pollution, you can claim money from the market. Check out carbon credits. Sure. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon everyone and uh, Mr. Jack. My presentation is about uh, Doraemon Pocket Money. The purpose is to secure an important belongings. It's to uh, secure important belongings from a thief and to allow a travelers or hawkers to have a better security and money. So it's more specially, it's like a bot, uh, money protection. This is the one of the design which is like uh, one of my relatives come up with to keep, my man, uh, keep the money in here. Like uh, you're wearing like a singlet, something like that. So you protect it with your own clothes. And the challenge is like to because why I make this one is the challenge because of the insecure in crowded areas and many pickpockets in some some of areas not in here also maybe in other countries and the solution that I give is like to provide safety to provide safety for your own money something like that and the unique value proportion is comfort comfort when you're wearing it uh, safety storage and then hidden pocket money it's not a feasible one it's not like outside wearing it's inside. So it's, I think it's more protectable or more safer. The customers or user segments is like uh, age 15 and above. It's more focused to hover and travelers. And the fund to raise is about one, one K, one K ringgit. And this is the what people that I need that uh, might want, me, uh, want them to join me is like a crew designer to improve the design which previously I showed you and then a project manager which is 
good in crowdfunding, have knowledge in market and how to persuade people or like have a way to good, good in talking. And another one is video designer because it's like to promote of the design. That's all about my project. Is there any questions? Is this, is this one inside? Is this one inside? Ah, yes, it is one inside. As you can see, it's like a singlet. You need to wear it like a singlet. Uh -huh. So how do you access inside? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, <laughs> actually, it's not used for taken or taking it. I mean, like you don't have to take out your money. It means like just for storage. For usually, for example, people's like uh, travels, right? They keep their monies outside the bags, right? And then they always keeping it something like that. But this, what they, you keep is like more, more to more money. But you not even spend it a lot of it, or maybe like passport or any other valuables stuff that you have. So this close purpose is just to keep it safe, which is you won't be touch it like frequently but it's seldomly touch it, something like that. But you can keep it safely and then like, like you sec it sec make you secure that nobody will know that there's a lot of valuable things inside. Because there is already some uh, such product in the market okay. where you can, it's under, under your clothes. Uh -huh. uh, so maybe you want to take that design and beat it Oh, okay. I don't know that. Okay. Okay. Thank Go you. Go to a travel shop. Travel shop? Shop that sells travel products. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any others? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Jack. Uh, so today my project, supposedly, my project, I proposed it uh, before the events of the Korean ferry uh, incident happened. So it was right about when uh, the MH370 incident happened. So I always wondered, like, since um, all this this event happening, this event happened. So I always wonder how we can prevent it in the future. So maybe I would like to remind the whole world to take part in remembering this incident because it's quite a big incident right uh, worldwide so I, my, my plan was to actually create a film where I gather everyone around the world who wants to be a part of this because as you know if it's around the world it's multi multinational and when it's multinational people know people from even from Malaysia the ones involved they know that people outside there do care about them and do care about this incident so um, I, the, when I put this inside Open, open Learning, I w the people who join me, will, they will take a video of themselves creating, uh, holding a message, whatever message of hope and strength or anything, which is a reminder that they are in this, in this together supporting this whole incident. So I won't be meeting these kind of people, but they will send me their own video taking uh, this thing by themselves in their own respective countries and they'll be sending to me and then I will be collaborating with a uh, up and coming film uh, production film company and then we'll create this film together. Okay, so that will be the initial big idea. So what we, what from this idea will happen is people who contribute to this thing will get their names in the credits and then uh, if people contribute more, they, they can get a t-shirt. The t-shirt, uh, as you can see, I need a t-shirt designer which uh, symbolizes MH370, remembering MH370 inside the shirt itself. So there is more or like uh, my project. Do you think that there are who wants to buy such product by the time you come to the market, will that already be forgotten? Because uh, there is a lifespan yeah. of this disaster. Yeah, exactly. That, that's why 
after the incident of, that's why I just now mentioned the ferry one, right? So instead of maybe putting MH370 as the key highlight, maybe I want to put as traveling, any kind of traveling incident in the, which happened from now and for the, and for the future so. So not only it's for MH370. Yeah. yeah. Any ideas or any recommendations? Yeah, I think if it is a more um, generic one that can be used all the time about travel safety, yeah. it's better than one particular or two events because the memory of this are not going to be long. And then you have to redesign it so that um, they are customer. I don't know, where are you going to show this film? It will be posted on YouTube. On YouTube? And who is paying for it? Paying for it? There's no be. customer, eh? only... Uh, they'll contribute to possible and then, uh, because before the film is created, the funds will have to come in first. So people will have to come in the, with the funds first and then only the film will be created. So it will be an educational, helpful film? Yeah, it will be a mo more likely a motivational film. Yeah. Need to think of a very good uh, script. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Been doing it already. Okay, thank you. So, hello, good morning. Hey, good morning, sorry, good evening. <laughs> uh, for, for this course, right, uh, for this, I will call it the, for this project, my project is called the Blue Wombat. Actually, it's Blue Wombat, without the E. Because, just for, for the fun of it, I just get rid of the E. So, this project, right, is actually to produce an app, sorry, to produce an app that she can contribute to the Welfare, welfare of the animal, animal. Yes, oh, correct. This is a project. Okay. Anyways, uh, the thing about this, right? This thing, this app, right? Is okay. It can be any type of app. Let's say game, or social, or, or even weather app. The idea is not to sell the app, but to, but for the in-app purchase. Let's say you download it. Let's say a game, lah. Who here play 2048? I know you do, my long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Just imagine, like, every time you have a difficulty, right? Just put a, like a button there, like a one simple button there, saying a hint or a redo that can actually solve your problem there. But every time you click on it, it's 10 cents. Okay, just imagine that. That's how actually my, the, the con idea concept behind this. Is to is the in-app purchase actually is the idea is the the in-app purchase every time people actually pay for it or buy anything, it will all it will contribute to the animal it, it will contribute to the shelter like con contribute to the shelter. Okay, the customer right is is the customer. My customer, my target customer is between people that is actually 15 to 30 years old. Most, most of them are. Uh, you guys, students, university students, that know how to achieve, oh, sorry, know how to actually use the app and actually pay for the app, I guess, and she use your Maybank to you and link it in a way, saying it. Uh, the platform is only for Androids and Windows user only. Uh, the app is actually specialized for puzzle lover and character builder. Okay, the funding is 2.k compared to the 15k to build a share app just now. The reason is the 2.k, right, is for the marketing purpose only, not for the to build the app. The app itself, my team, my, my, my physical team can actually build it already. I'm trying to, uh, I already collaborate with the IT student to actually build this app. And if the funding and everything is all is a, what you call it, is a go through, then we just launch it and let it flow. And oh yeah, the function metrics. 
the people that I'm looking for is those who can actually go for uh, have the fun to have the function of marketing, designing, and programming. The the marketer right have to have a knowledge of sorry about this of social media. The skill is online marketing, of course. I think you have to be friendly and open. Uh, open as in open-minded, willing to... I uh, just open. Uh. Attribute, uh, that one is not that really important. The designing is... The, no, the one that I want, the designer, right, is to edit some of the design that actually we want to give. Like we can, we, me, myself, with my team, can actually uh, draw it, but you cannot actually design it using the, what do you call it? The computer, uh, using Photoshop or... Uh, Oh yeah, Photoshop. We don't we don't know how to use Photoshop, so I'm looking people to she can help me on that. Programmer, mostly in the HTML uh, because we want to make a website out of it instead of paying a website to she. It will cost more than 2.5k uh, basically if we actually ask people to actually hire someone to actually build our website. Okay, that's about it lah. Uh. Okay, now for you guys to actually clap my hand. Okay, okay. okay, Jack, so you got any comment on that? Uh, since you are able to get everything for free, why don't you also market for free? Uh, yes, we can do that. Market, we can market it for free, but to a certain extent. To so 2005. Yeah, yeah, to a certain extent. Like Facebook, right? You need ten dollar, ten ten dollars, I think, ten dollars for them to actually promote you, for like a uh, hundreds and fifty like every single day for one month. So, basically, that's two point five k, right? Is for marketing purpose. So this customer will pay how many dollars for every of the ten cents? What you mean, like? Uh, per customer, how much? And I'm assuming the lance up for all of what? Because you say at every click they get a pay Yes, let's say every click is 10 cent. Providing that they actually click. No, no, what I mean is they actually. They actually, right? Uh, have you played any game in a phone? Free. I know, I know most of the game right now is free. But Clash of Clan, have you heard of Clash of Clan? Okay, that, that cannot be an example then. Uh, online game, Warcraft. <laughs> World of Warcraft. Have you played it? Have you heard of it? No, I don't play this game. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, how, how to say it? Life gets shorter. <laughs> Life gets shorter. Okay, correct. Uh, no, just an example. Oh, example. Why, uh, let's say 15 years old. Oh, 15 years old. you how much? It depends it depend on how addic addicted him to that game. How, how, how he keen enough to actually go to the next level. Mm. It totally depends on the app, the gaming app. Mm. Ah. But you don't have an estimate. Estimate, uh, how much per click is it? Mm. The one that I actually talk with my friend, right, is actually 10 cents for every three hints. So, but, but, but this one is just a discussion, la, but we are, we are not that sure about that, but yeah. I think once you start, you will raise a lot more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now also, I've got a lot of questions also coming here and there. So, but in overall, la, what, what do you think about it? I think it really depends on the design of the hmm? game. Design of the game? Yeah. Let's say we have a very good game and everything. Yeah. Uh, mm, okay. Okay. For that, I, I thank you. I guess. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. The hall. Oh, no wonder. I hope that some of you at least will think of something for the World Talent Organization as well. So, any idea? I don't know what. Maybe uh, something related to the toilet, maybe something not related to the toilet. But the toilet is related to everything in your life. Food is directly related to the toilet. Drinks also. 
coffee, tea, alcohol, bar, pubs, everything is related to health. Then you have things that freshen yourself, brush your teeth, wash your hands, bathe, all related to health. Then you have other paper, underwear, water saving, diapers, sanitary pad, all related to toilet. So if you want to think of toilet ideas, unlimited. There's one particular thing that is uh, interesting also. In poor countries, women don't have sanitary pad. So they use newspaper, they use uh, straw, they use mud, whatever. So very often, they just let it drink. It's very uncomfortable and unhygienic. So if you were to uh, think about this kind of problem to be solved, then washable sanitary pad and how to prevent this kind of thing. That is very low cost for them. They are very interesting. Okay, difficult for them. More fun.